really the root of it is, you know, I started following Jesus. I had this encounter with Jesus as a young man that cha has changed my life, changed the course of my life. Uh, I think Jesus is the most beautiful thing in the world, in the universe. A little bit of backstory on you, Tim. Like, where did where did you grow up? And kind of give us a little bit of your your history. Sure. Um, let's see. I grew up in Portland, Oregon, and uh, that's where I live now. Also, uh, I had a, a a long stint of my late twenties and thirties in the Midwest and Jerusalem for a season, and then landed back here in Portland after being in school for far too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I loved every minute of it. I, it was a long time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I grew up here in Portland. And, I mean, yeah, right, kind of near downtown. And uh, there you go. I mean, really, the things that have marked my life were my parents were awesome. They were- Christian family? Uh, mm hmm They were, I mean, uh, they are the era of the, they were in their 20s in the late 60s, you know, so this is like the, they were hippies. <laughs> yeah. through. Then they started following Jesus. Um, and um, then it was like, follow Jesus, smoke lots of pot and love your neighbor kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then the smoke lots of pot kind of tapered down right around the time my sister and I arrived. Into okay. The, so anyway, so yeah, it was just kind of, uh, they're amazing, very creative people in music and visual art. And so that's, I grew up in a yeah. room full of music and my dad's art studio is a graphic designer okay. you know, in our garage. And so, you know, big art books, sketches everywhere. And he's just yeah. an amazing person. So, so Jesus and art uh, yeah. and then skateboarding. Art creative <laughs> stuff that shows up in the Bible project. It's kind of big. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, uh, so they gave me my first skateboard when I was 11 years old. And that, the reason I, that's important is that that's all I, the moment I got my first skateboard, it's all I wanted to do. And it, and it wasn't just um, as a sport, it's like a whole, it's a life, culture, yeah, everything. You yeah. know, it was everything. Community, a skate culture, a skate vibe, all of it. Yeah, that. that's right. And I think because I lived in the, in the city, then, uh, you know, the skate shop, one of the main skate shops was not very far from my house. And um, there were just a few skate parks. One of them was under one, a bridge uh, in downtown Portland. <laughs> so anyway, I don't, you know, that's yeah. part of where I grew up skateboarding. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's a, it has a real underbelly. Right. Uh, urban skateboard culture does, but I I loved it. And um, there was a, skate? what's that? You still skate? Oh, well, I'm not progressing, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> but you still uh, you know, to, to get from A to B, I would still really love cruising around my neighborhood. When my, when they're riding bikes, I'll, you know, ride my skateboard. Yeah, yeah. But, um, so as a team, what, what, what? Somewhere in there, you mentioned you did a lot of schooling and a lot of that was Bible degrees and all that. So yeah. as a teenager, when, how did that come about? What led you to say, okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this theology and Bible training and Bible degrees? And yeah, well, there was um, a church in um, Northeast Portland that built a skate park in their back lot and um, built a, it became a ministry. It was an outreach ministry skate park. And so... Um, <laughs> In the 90s, in Portland, there weren't a lot of public skate parks around the area. That's really changed now, but, um, and it rains a lot here. So everybody went to skate church. That's what it was called, skate church. And um, so every Tuesday night, you know, for most of my late teens, you know, I'd go. And they would stop, they would shut down the park for 20 minutes in the middle of the evening every night. And one of the staff would give a talk about Jesus a story about him, one of his teachings. And so, you know, and most everybody is there is just putting up with it because, yeah, yeah. you know, they just want to keep skating. But so, but, you know, so it, it was years of stories about Jesus. There's who worked at the park and just over time uh, that started to mess, really mess with me. Jesus, I just, uh, 
I really became captivated by him yeah. in a slow motion kind of way. And so um, when I was almost 20, I just graduated. No, it's not true. I'd been out of high school for one year. I had nothing going on in my life except skateboarding, to, you know, manual labor jobs that I could get. <laughs> and uh, 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 some friends of mine at Skate Church really were honest with me about my life and some decisions that I was making. And they, they kindly um, invited me to make some decisions about my life and about Jesus. And um, I'm so grateful for those guys. So I, and I decided to start following Jesus yeah. because of some other skateboarders. <laughs> and uh, so um, a number of guys, so I started hanging around the park a lot. I would start kind of telling my story of why I started following Jesus and started giving some of the Jesus talks at the skate park and very quickly realized like, I don't know what I'm talking about once I stopped telling my story. So there was a, a, a Christian college across the street um, called Multnomah Bible College, Multnomah University now. And so I enrolled for classes there. Um, it turns out my parents actually had saved up some money for me to do college, but they had never told me because I had no goals. And so they didn't yeah. want to tell me that they yeah. had like some money set aside because I probably would have done something stupid with it. So anyway, so they helped me start taking classes and I, and I just had some professors in my first yeah. few semesters who just like blew my mind with not just Jesus, but the, the scriptural story around Jesus and how the Bible as a work of literature communicates the big story to make sense of who Jesus is, yeah. biblical theology. I just fell in love. And uh, four years later, I finished that degree in biblical studies. And I was like, I'm just getting started. This is like the coolest stuff in the world. Yeah, yeah. You're so. Right. Anyway, that's the, but the seeds of it all, both my ap academic and my Jesus kind of trajectory were both sown in those early years at a skate park. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah, awesome. totally. And fast forward to today, you know, a little bit about your family now. You're, you're married, you got a couple little, little boys. And... Yeah, yep, yeah. Um, let's see. Well, uh, yeah, so I'll skip. I had, um, eventually went on to do doctoral studies in, in Hebrew Bible and Jewish studies. And that was in Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, and then finished there. Um, and the church we had been attending all those years, I came on staff as a pastor and um, really found I loved teaching Bible and biblical theology. It was a university kind of focused church. And so, um, lots of faculty and grad students. Yeah, yeah. And so, but really thoughtful, like no questions are off limits. It was an intellectual environment. Right. And I just loved it, man. I just loved it. And um, so I kind of found I, the, my passion was to be at this interface of the mission of local churches, and, but bringing a, a scholarly informed biblical theology approach. And I was like, I just want to do this the rest of my life. And yeah. so we had our first son and uh, we wanted to move back to Portland because our family was all back here. And so uh, we moved back to Portland uh, almost eight years ago. And I've, uh, I've uh, been adjunct at professor at a seminary here. I was in pastoral ministry. And then a friend and I started the Bible Project um, a few years ago. It well, no, like six, I wanna, I six years ago, yeah. so we could talk more about that. But yeah, there you go. I've been back in Portland. And, yeah, and so well, did and you meet your wife in Portland? Was she? Oh. Yeah, I actually, I met um, Jessica in college in Portland. Okay, at Multnomah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, at Multnomah. And then she, um, she stuck with me through um, many years of school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, she, she uh, is amazing. She is an administrative organizational like uh queen yeah she takes things that are chaotic and brings order and makes them better and so she actually worked at our church okay and um she had a uh, had a wonderful experience there while i was immersed in hebrew verbs and <laughs> ancient near eastern backgrounds or whatever but i was having a good time too but yeah. so there you go yeah so we met uh in, in portland and 
And we have two little boys. They're six and eight right now. Okay. 2019. And uh, yeah, parenting little boys. It, it, you know what it kind of feels like sometimes is like I'm a parent and oh yes, I have a job also. Um, and I love, I love what I get to do, but parenting takes a lot of focus, at least yeah. for me. It takes yeah. a lot of mental energy. To a help. lot of intentionality to it. Yeah, yeah. a lot, of, totally. And it's wonderful, but man, it's the, one of the most challenging and rich experiences I've, I've ever had. When you, have, when you read books, they don't talk back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Martin Luther who called <laughs> parenting uh, the school for character. Yeah, man, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So it's good for me, but it's yeah. it's it's a rich season right now yeah. with them. So. All right. So with the Bible Project, you and your your friend John is his name, right? Correct. Yeah, that's right. John and Collins. You guys started uh, the Bible Project. You said six years ago or something. So give us the kind of the origin. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Actually, you know, again, all the, it, he and I met through that skate park ministry. Um, okay. So we met in college, and he had moved uh, to Portland from. Uh, Seattle area um, to go to Multnomah and then he yeah started uh, getting involved at the skate park and that's how we first crossed paths okay but um, so yeah we kind of became friends through that and then our paths kept crossing over the years when I moved back to Portland uh, he brought up yeah just this idea he, he had um, so while I was in school for far too long he developed like an actual marketable job skill <laughs> in 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 the kind of marketing advertising world but specifically the niche of consulting with organizations that want to get the word out about their thing and understanding their thing boiling it down to a very simple explanation and then turning that explanation into a short animated video okay and so he uh, started a business created the, uh, that made explainer videos for um, mostly pe mostly technology world, yeah. but um, so he was five years into that business. Uh, so he's when kind I of moved. Like the marketing guru behind the Bible Project. Oh, totally. No, none of this would exist without without John. And and in in many in many ways, one is he actually knew how to start a business. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, he had an existing animation studio team going. Right. Um, and he had already kind of honed this craft of how to boil complex things down and into a simple set of ideas that you can communicate through a, yeah. an animated video. So um, uh, basically then I was just the, I was the nerd. <laughs> so what um, happened? Like, did he come to you and say, hey, I've been thinking about, or did you go to him and say? Yep. He, no, he came to me and, uh, cause we were friends and we had kept up and uh, I had done some very rudimentary attempts to boil down books of the Bible in yeah. short little five minute videos um, through a project at, our, at the church that I was working at. And I think he had seen them and, um, you know, it just sparked this idea like, whoa, Tim's interested in visual communication, biblical theology, I've got this thing. And I think he was kind of bored also working and just on making videos about cloud computing and stuff like yeah, that. So. Yeah. Uh, and he loves Bible and theology, and so that, so there you go. So he pitched the idea. Um, what year is that? That's about 2013 or so. Yeah, correct. The very end of 2013. Okay. And so, um, excuse me, I'm so sorry. The end of 2012. Oh, okay. 2012. Um, okay. From like the first conversation, then throughout 13, um, we worked on two videos, and um, built out the crowdfunding model. The idea that we wanted to be able to give the content away mm -hmm. instead of doing a paid subscriber to a media channel or something like that. Right. We wanted to give it away and we felt like it would be f more fun if, um, the, if people found them helpful, they would be excited to help us make more. And so that was, we kind of said, well, if we're going to make more, we can't do it unless people yeah. help us do it. So. Yeah. I remember the early screens, green bar or something across. The top. Oh, whoa, yeah. yeah, yeah, John, yeah, that was in the early days. Yeah, it was old-fashioned, like Baptist church-style fundraising thermometer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was, I've been tracking you guys for a long time. Oh, that's well. There you go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, you know, started a nonprofit business. That's a whole process, you know. Yeah. Um, 
got the thing ready, and then we launched the first two videos in in May 2014. Wow. And um, wow. and then we're able to raise money for the next video uh, within a few days. It was pretty remarkable, wow. and at least to us, it was remarkable. And so um, we did about a video every three or four months um, at that pace for about two years. Uh -huh. But then just things began to pick up pace. Um, and as the word spread and support grew, we started a new series where um, we dialed down the production value and created the read, what's called the read scripture series, yep. which is a little, a short, well, short, five to seven minutes of every book of the Bible. And um, that took 18 months to make, but some- All, all, get, all the Bible books, 18 months? 18 months. Um, and part of it was we, some people, you know, got a hold of us and said, if you could do every book of the Bible, how long would it take and how much would it cost? And at first we were like, well, at the pace we've been going about 10 years. <laughs> and so they, uh, some really ama amazing partners, they just pushed us to, to be like, you know, um, think, you know, brainstorm. What could, what could you do in a shorter time? And so we came up with a style that we could uh, produce a video, you know, in about um, one month. And so then we just found a way to replicate that process. I still don't quite know how I did it all because I had I was a, had a uh, a full time that in those eighteen months turned into a half time job as a pastor at a church. But yeah. it was a really amazing season. We made those videos, and then that really widened our audience because those videos spread a lot of places. Yeah, and, um, and yeah, so so there you go. As of um, this is August 2019. It's 2019. <laughs> so yeah, we have a um, we're John and I are at capacity, so we're able to produce now about 15 to 20 videos a year. With our we have a full time about 12 people on an animation team, yeah. and um, it's really fun. It's yeah. the most fun thing I've ever done. All right. Yeah. So yeah. we're yeah, we're finishing out a long time. series on how to read the Bible. Yeah. Uh, this year um, and really investing in theological theme videos where you tell the whole biblical story through the lens of just one key word or image or theme that you know goes throughout the bible so do you spend so, quite a bit of time studying to prepare for the video yeah you know i i treat that part of my job like i think a professor would where it's like i'm prepping for a class right um, and it's just that I have one student <laughs> whose name is John Collins. Yeah. And so uh, most of our videos begin life with I just treat it like I'm prepping for a class on whatever. Yeah. The theme of trees in the Bible or how to read the parables or how to. And then he and I sit down and talk for anywhere, I don't know, uh, five to 20 hours on a, on a topic or something. And then that all gets chopped up and then. It gets to is uh is our podcast the bio project yeah. podcast and so that's kind of like where we point people to for the next level it's like hey if the video was helpful hey check this out yeah here's more that's yeah. right and, and it's so essentially that conversation, does that conversation be sort of become the genesis then of how you guys figure out what do we want the video to look like correct yeah that's right yeah we walk through the material and just like he used to sit with you know um a client you know for a whole day listening to you know about their new kind of microchip or whatever yeah. <laughs> um so you know he listens and we'll talk our way through uh the parables we just finished yesterday six hours of conversation on the parables of jesus wow. and it was so amazing yeah and so we're both working through the content and the ideas but then also thinking of ways we could visualize it brainstorming how to boil it down in the script and then um from there john goes away and he just lets it all simmer and then he always produces the first draft of what you actually hear in the video yeah and he just has an amazing gift of making complex things feel simple yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome yeah it's a really amazing and i've learned so much from him about um well you know john i'm, I'm, I'm guess i'm guessing you know bible nerds it's the most wonderful thing in the world it's so fun to help invite people into the bible I find it very hard to be concise because yeah. <laughs> there's so much to explore. 
Uh, and, yeah. uh, and so John has forced me to learn how to be concise. Good. Good. Uh, and that's been a real gift to me. Yeah. So, yeah. And you're, you're pretty passionate about, uh, at this point now, since you've been doing this, this medium of teaching the Bible online. I mean, it's a unique medium for yes. Bible yeah, it is. And so what, what about that medium is like really, I don't know, you're passionate about, you're excited about what, what, what kind of lights you up about doing mm. it this way online and, and. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, mm, I wouldn't have planned on, yeah, ending up doing this kind of thing. I, my real passion is to be in a classroom environment uh -huh. um, with a medium to small size class. Or you have interaction. And, yeah. yeah, dialogical. Yeah. Um, yep. Because uh, for me, the classroom is a learning environment. Yeah. Um, and so, because, you know, I love to learn. So I learn from scholars by reading all their books and then the classroom is where I'm you process and yeah. you, you learn as you both I'm trying to reframe everything I've learned but then all the question and the dialogue yeah. so yeah. I um I've all that's my first kind of love is that kind of environment the environment is the classroom totally yeah. so the, the the online environment um however that's really again that's part of John's contribution he was already making video these yeah, kind of videos yeah. but um, what we've discovered is that there is a huge layer of Western culture, religious and maybe not re religious, but faith friendly, that really um, is interested in what a thoughtful, robust Christian worldview looks like, yeah. or that's interested in the Bible yeah, yeah. Um, and what it has to say, apart from how maybe it gets used in political debates or religious debates right, right. and so on. And so um, the, the place to have that public conversation or to make a contribution is where everybody's living, which is right. online. And so no, that's good. we didn't sure didn't plan it. I think it's yeah. just kind of been the Holy Spirit had something in mind that we, we had no idea, you know, that kind of beyond thing. that. Yeah. Now, yeah. There's, there's another uh, YouTube channel, it's 10 minute Bible hour. The, the guy on the channel is Matt Whitman. I don't know if you've seen mm. But he's been a professor before and, mm. and uh, very philosophical, very theological, very mm. down to earth. Mm. I really enjoy watching some of his videos. And mm. his YouTube channel has just blown up this year from wow. already at 25,000. That's just him doing it. It was at 25,000 yeah. in March, which is pretty good. Yeah, now, yeah. Now it's at, um, I believe he's at almost 50 or 60,000 in the last few wow. months. Which is blown. Yeah, sure, People, sure people who aren't even believers, but having that conversation online. Yeah, that's right. Them thoughtfully wrestle with Christian worldview themes and philo Christian theology and philo philosophical themes. I mean, yeah, yeah. There is, people are online. That's where people live. They live Yeah, online. that's right. And the shareability factor, um, yeah. you know, wh whether it's podcast or video content. Yeah, uh, that's just it. It's where, um, so it's where everybody already lives. Yeah. <laughs> And um, uh, that's a big factor for the Bio Project, to be honest, like we started and still are in terms of the main, a huge part of audiences as a YouTube educational channel. That's yeah. where we fit in the YouTube universe. Yeah. And it's a universe <laughs> of educational content that's on yeah. there. And um, that's good. Yeah. So, yeah. Shift gears just a little bit to uh, you personally, a little bit as far as the Bible. So one of your favorite bible passages and why what's just the text it's like man now this text i just love this text i love sharing this text or this text has meant a lot to me and yeah mm. favorite bible passage and why oh man <laughs> oh that's it's so hard because usually it's just like what i'm working on <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> whatever uh whatever book i happen to happen to be working on um uh i, I have uh, uh, early on maybe in like early seminary, I can't remember. I had a friend who'd made an offhand comment. Um, this was another skateboarder who also ended up in biblical studies, who's a friend of mine. Um, we were talking about um, the, the Hebrew Bible text that Jesus talks about the most or the books that he does. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Genesis, Deuteronomy, Isaiah, and the Psalms yeah. are like the, get, are the greatest hits for Jesus. And so... Um, somehow I continue to be drawn to the book of Isaiah 
in a way that it never ever is i never hear it the same each time i go back yeah um somehow the whole old and new testaments find themselves condensed <laughs> the themes and imagery and ideas there um and so uh, there you go i think i'm gonna be the just book of isaiah that's it huh? <laughs> the, the isaiah scroll you know yeah. like yeah. it's one of the one of the first dead sea scrolls that was found the isaiah scroll yeah um but it's and it keeps you know i keep discovering new layers of depth connected to the rest of of the hebrew bible but um you know that opening poem in isaiah 2 about the nations ascending to the exalted jerusalem yeah issuing in the in the kingdom of god and peace and then that's like a, it's like a, 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 a symphony that poem introduces all this vocabulary and themes that just roll throughout the book and keep getting replayed yeah but that poem right there man isaiah 2 that's, that's just i don't know so you asked for a passage and there i gave you the whole book I, you know it's interesting i uh for years i've I keep wanting to say, I'm, I'm going to spend more time with Isaiah. I'm going to spend more. And I, I just, yeah. so many other things going on. I've never gotten to spend more time with Isaiah. So <laughs> he's one of those uh, books where it's like, I wish I had a richer grasp of Isaiah. Yeah. Yes. I haven't got to spend the time with it. And, you know, uh, Hebrew poetry. Yep. It's hard. Most of it's poetry. Yep. yep. And Hebrew Dense. poetry can be challenging. And, yeah, that's and, right. Uh, and then Hebrew poetry translated into English. <laughs> that a, a new challenge to it you know you yeah totally the yeah, literary right. echoes and some of that so yeah, yeah. do you no, do, it's, do it's a lot remarkable. of your my, my, my boys um have uh their aunt recently gave them these little kaleidoscopes yeah like old-fashioned kaleidoscopes you know right. and it has a little plastic things inside it's constantly moving and uh I was looking through one the other day, and I was like, "Yeah, this is what it feels like to read the Book of Isaiah." Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just like, what, what, "What's happening?" It's beautiful. Right. What's happening right now? Yeah. Uh, and uh, however, once yeah, to, once the pieces start to fall into place, it's pretty remarkable what's right, going on. Right. Anyway, there you go. Yeah. Do you do a lot of your own personal Bible reading in the original text, the original language? Um. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I worked really hard in my early 20s to invest in those skills so that um, I could, yeah, just read read the Bible in the languages it was written in. And yeah. um, I'm really, I was single <laughs> and I didn't have kids and I had time. And I, every day, I'm grateful that I invested in that skill yeah. set. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's there you a, go. I yeah, know. That's, that it, is a, that's a skill set I wish I would have honed. I mean, I had... I don't know, five or six years of Greek and three years of Hebrew, and and mm. uh, my Greek is pretty solid. My Hebrew is pretty wimpy. So <laughs> yeah, it's a, I was, I was it's a different testament, you know. And yeah, so, totally. Yeah, it's a different. Totally, I hear that. Yeah, it takes, it takes work, but it it's uh, the reward is well worth it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. All right, some fun facts about uh, Tim Mackey. Ah, <laughs> okay. So, uh, PC or Mac? um mac okay uh -huh. all, right. all right although i i will say there are some uh computer gear nerds on our team here at the bio project and they they just make their own computers they're pc guys and they yeah. make their own and these things look like spaceships they're yeah. such cool looking <laughs> not like you know they're not your your everyday pc so yeah. every once in a while i look over and they maybe you know, tempt me to come yeah. over to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, if I could have a cool one like that. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> You're in Portland. Portland's kind of famous for coffee and microbrews. So yeah. uh, microbrew or coffee. Oh wow. Why do you have to pick? <laughs> <laughs> Take both, huh? <laughs> it's just different times of day. <laughs> okay. So morning your coffee and later in the day the micro Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um no, uh, it's kind of ridiculous on both fronts because there's um, the market is both saturated and competitive. And so there's always a new roaster, a new yeah, yeah. shop, a new place to go and so on. Um, Favorite coffee so, shop? Um, you know, uh, also walkability. So there's one in my neighborhood called Upper Left Roasters and uh, they have their machines in the coffee shop. Okay. Uh, it's it's near, near my house and it's a wonderful workspace. Yeah, yeah. Really beautiful. So Upper Left is okay. uh, a really amazing cup of coffee. Okay. I don't know if you can get it in that many places, but 
Probably not, but if yeah, we're... there you go. It's not far from the bar project studio, so okay. I guess it's... I'm never in Portland. Um, my, I'm not a coffee drinker, but my wife is. Ah, I, drink tea, I see. So I'm I a see. tea drinker. So. Oh, I understand. But my wife, I, you know, she she loves the good coffee. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and there you go. You know, a really uh, amazing and creative brewery right now in Portland is called Ecliptic, and uh, they're mostly exploring the fruitier, sour citrus realm okay uh these yeah, days that's your thing um yeah sours i uh i don't know maybe i'll see the light one day but, um <laughs> there's yeah something amazing about a citrus ipa that's yeah. on point but uh, okay. anyway there you go yeah. all right a great day for tim Mackey would be oh um uh that i'm on i'm like three days in uh out in like the mount hood national forest backpacking something like okay. that yes out in, out in nature hanging out yeah yeah, yeah totally or uh, you know just on a long a long day hike but yeah. um yeah and any more any more the places where i really connect with the love of god in a personal way it's when my bible's open usually if it's dark outside and there's a candle burning <laughs> <laughs> or if I'm out in the wilderness on a hike yeah. on a mountain or something. And There's something to be said for sitting at about 8,000 feet under oh. the stars. Sheesh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and you're just reminded like, oh, yeah, humans um, are puny. We're yeah. puny. And <laughs> Small mate, mate always grabs me in those that's moments. It, man. You know? that's, that's exactly it. What yeah. are humans? Yeah. And it's really remarkable that humans are what they are, but we're not the only show on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Craziest day at the Bible project has been. Oh, um, you know, uh, what, what delights me is, okay. Yeah. You know, just right now, um, I walked by, we have a magazine that we make for our supporters. Yep. And so I just walked by, um, one of our graphic designers has melted all of these crayons into different shapes and then built this really cool i don't quite know what it was but he built a little camera a little studio out in our kitchen area <laughs> and he's taking pictures of these like creations made out of geometric shapes of melted crayons it's for the cover of the next wow thing uh and then i walk in out a doorway and um, a bunch of our artists are painting a mural in our little lunch our little lunch seating area and it's going to be like it's the Eden. It's a whole little Eden jungle yeah. on all the walls. And uh, and then I go to the recording room and record a video. And then I come back and check in on how video for how to read the Gospels is going. And I'm just like, oh, this is so fun. Yeah. So all these projects, all these creative people right. working on projects. And That's it's pretty so, pretty amazing. That and it's really cool. Have all these creative types who are getting to getting to create in weird, unique, crazy ways. Yeah. Yeah experience here at the Bible Project. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really, it's really a, a lot of fun. My dad, who, if you remember, he, he's an artist and a graphic yeah. designer. He loves to come meet me for lunch here because yeah, there's just always something new to look at or right. something somebody's made or something. Yeah, it's very cool. Very, yeah, it's great. Well, if, uh, if, if somebody were to give like a one-line commendation for the Bible Project someday, like you know, not that I'll ever have a eulogy, but a eulogy type thing. Like, mm. what would you want that one line commendation for the Bible project to be? Oh, wow. That's a good question, John. Um, uh, I mean, really the root of it is, you know, I started following Jesus. I had this encounter with Jesus as a young man that cha has changed my life, changed the course of my life. Uh, I think Jesus is the most beautiful thing in the world, in the universe. And um, I've come to see that the scriptural texts that help unpack who he is are also one of the most beautiful things that's ever touched the human race. <laughs> and so, yeah, my hope is just that people discover Jesus in a new way and begin to read their Bibles, discovering what, how amazing it is. Um, from the stuff that we're making and from, from watching and listening to what we do. That's, yeah. that's my hope. Yeah. 
What we say is we want to help people experience the Bible as a unified story that leads to Jesus. Yeah. And um, I don't think I came up with that, but somebody on our team did. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah I'm a big fan of the Bible Project. I, like I said, I've pretty much been watching you guys from the beginning and, and uh, recommend you wherever I can. Just had my students in my Galatians class watch your video as part of the introduction. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Thanks. Thanks, John. I'm, really, I'm glad yeah, they're helpful. I didn't even know about it which was shocking to me. I think everyone should know about you. I feel like everyone probably does. So <laughs> I, I'm a huge fan of what you guys are doing. I, Great. I, because of that, what you just said, that you're helping people read the Bible better, yeah. you're helping people read the Bible wisely, pointing mm. people towards Jesus while you do it. And mm. uh, that, I mean, what else really matters? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's, totally, yeah, yeah, I'm with you.